There has been a rising tide of anti-Asian hate crime sweeping the country in recent years, much of that corresponding to the COVID-19 pandemic. This recent spike has led some community organizers to take a look at Chinatown through a lens of segregation. While many acknowledge that tight-knit nature of the community and its culture is important, they're also looking for ways to build bridges with other communities. And joining us now with more are David Wu, executive director of the Puitok Center and board president of the Coalition for a Better Chinese American Community, and Chris Javier, a deacon at Chinese Christian Union Church who is featured in one of the first-hand documentaries now streaming at WTTW.com slash first-hand. Welcome both of you. Uh, Chris Javier, I want to start with you because in your first-hand documentary, you talk about the fact that segregation itself is bad, but having a cultural hub like Chinatown is really positive for the Asian American community. So explain the distinction. Yeah, um, first, thanks for having me. Um, I'll, I'll start with this. I think that it's really difficult to be the only one in a group. Um, that's something that I've dealt with my entire life. Uh, so growing up in the suburbs, sometimes you're the, the only Asian in the classroom. Uh, I went from being in that classroom to teaching that classroom. So I'm a, I'm a teacher on the, uh, the Northwest side. Uh, and, and oftentimes in, in the classroom as the, the Asian uh, teacher, I'm still the only one. Um, the way that that can become tiring is the onus is on you to really build bridges with the people that you're around uh, to connect with them because the default is that you don't belong. The default is that uh, you are the other. And so unless you're doing the work to really connect, uh, you stay in that spot and that's a disadvantageous spot. The benefit that our culture, our community has is that you take that weight off of them. Uh, you take that weight off of them uh, to, and, and some of our, our um, people living in, in our communities, they're dealing with that um, in, in different spaces, but they can come back to a place where uh, they don't have to explain who they are. They don't have to um, do that extra work uh, to connect. And, and that, that, um, that's a huge blessing for, for people um, in our community. And David Wu, this might be one of the reasons why Chicago's Chinatown has been growing in populations. You see other cities, Chinatown's become more of a tourist attraction and the Asian American population disperses, not so much. So what makes Chicago's Chinatown different? You know, the other Chinatowns, New York, uh, San Francisco, Boston, all those Chinatowns are right in the middle of downtown. And there's a lot of gentrification pressures. Uh, Chicago's Chinatown uh, was kicked out of its original spot at Clark and Van Buren around 1912 and, and moved to the Armour Square where we're located. We've, we've been there for over a hundred years and it's more of a, 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 a typical Chicago community of two flats, three flats. And so there's not that gentrification so that we've been able to stay in one place for over a hundred years now. And Chris Javier, I want to go back to what you were saying, uh, the fact that having Chinatown is a blessing for Asian Americans to be part of that community. but is it closed off from other neighborhoods, other communities, other backgrounds? I think in, in a certain sense, no. When, when we talk about like the commercial aspect, that's a big part of, of Chinatown. That's a big draw to um, the way that people do life. Um, we've, we've made our Chinatown a place where we want to invite people in to experience our culture, um, to, to taste our food, to see different sites. And so, um, you know, in, in my segment, you get to kind of see what that is. When you turn on to Wentworth, you're kind of transported to a different place. Um, and there's a huge benefit to to our people to have that um, kind of, I guess, cultural integrity because you can invite people in to come in and experience that. In terms of it being uh, closed off, I, I would say this. I think there's there's still a lot of things that our Chinatown is is trying to wrestle and grapple with in terms of how we represent ourselves and, and how we um, address some of the issues in our community. And so when it comes to um, safety, for example, um, I think before, as, as we, it's important that we, we do build bridges into, to other neighborhoods. Um, but I think the, the centrality and the unity of, of Chinatown, uh, really does need to be focused inwardly right now on some of the, the huge issues that are, are pressing us. And, and, and a lot of that is, is crime. Um, we, we tried to address that as a church because as we went around, um, you know, post pandemic, the needs it, during the pandemic were, were economic. It was food, um, and it was um, just basic necessities, uh, PPE, safety, uh, 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 PPE. Uh, as we moved on, as the pandemic wore on, we saw that there was a growing need uh, and concern for safety. And sadly, despite our, our best efforts um, this past year, our beat 
um, beat 914, it was the highest in the city uh, for robberies. Um, and so there are, there are a lot of things that we need to do in terms of looking out and, and building those bridges. But I think a lot of our resources right now, um, they need to be de uh, dedicated towards addressing the needs in, in our community as well. David Wu, from your vantage point, what is causing this spike in crime in that neighborhood? And is it connected to the rise in anti-Asian hate crimes that we see? Yeah, you know, as a community leader, we, we try not to say that it's uh, racially motivated, but, you know, there's crime all over the city. Uh, but but um, the community does feel uh, targeted uh, just during this, this time. Uh, we, we try to uh, keep people vigilant. Uh, there's uh, community members that uh, are involved in, in safety watches. But, you know, Chinatown is actually just is more than just Cermak and Wentworth, what people think when they uh, come into the community. We're growing into Bridgeport and McKinley Park and beyond. And, and so there's, there's actually uh, a Chinatown that's a commercial tourist area, uh, but, but also a residential area where uh, Chinese Americans are living. Uh, over the last three decades, it's grown from 11,000 in Armour Square, Bridgeport, McKinley Park to, to 28,000 and more, enough that we're, there's actually discussion about uh, the first majority Asian ward in the city of Chicago. And, and I want to pick up on that discussion because it seems like there's consensus that the 11th ward or whatever, whatever ward gets drawn in that area will be a majority Asian American, even though there's little consensus on anything else in these uh, maps that have been proposed. So, Chris Javier, how important is that to have that kind of representation in city council? It's huge. I think um, not only for our uh, Chinese community here in Chicago, but this is something that people pay attention to. They'll pay attention to it nationwide. Um, because I think for a long time, Asian Americans um, just across our nation have, have felt uh, disenfranchised, have felt uh, voiceless, uh, that nobody um, you know, pays attention to us. Um, oftentimes, we're a footnote in somebody else's um, story or narrative. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity for us to, to kind of step in um, and, and be able to, to call some shots and, and to, to voice our own concerns and, and um, I think another dynamic, though, is that w even if it's a, a majority Asian ward, um, you get like 50, 51 percent. That's going to be a very diverse ward. Um, however they cut it, it's going to be very, very diverse. And so my feeling is that the best way, if, if we were to get Asian representation um, in, in leadership, the best way uh, to represent Asian Americans well and, and make them proud would be for, for a leader to come in and, and take care of everybody in, in the ward well. Uh, and that drives to the unity that, you know, a lot of people have been talking about tonight, where we do want to voice the concerns and lift up the concerns of the people who have felt marginalized. And, and our community has definitely felt that. But we need to do so in a way that doesn't um, downplay the needs of, of others in our community as well. And so um, I think it's a great opportunity. All right, and uh, of course, we'll see where that remap uh, effort uh, ends up. And remember, you can watch a documentary about Chris at WTTW.com slash firsthand. And our thanks to David Wu and Chris Javier. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us.